Hello everybody, welcome back to Sketchcraft Live. Today I'll be coloring Han and Chewy with Copic markers. This is my paper. It says B marker paper. B marker paper. It's got a nice little thickness, doesn't bleed. It's real smooth and slick. This is a printout of my original pencils. I like to tint it, sometimes uh, grayscale, sometimes colored, like you see here. Uh, the original pencils look like so. Right? And all their original inks and pencil-y goodness. And then we'll do this. The finished result will look something like this to this, right? So it'll be all colored and, and stuff like that. We uh, got the uh, Luke Skywalker done last night. And pencils. All the videos for these are up in the YouTube channel. You can just look them up. Um, joining me today is Brandon James from Lead Heavy or LeadHeavy.com. Ledheavy.com. Ledheavy it's your email that throws me off. Yeah. So get that squared away. How you doing, Brandon? What are you doing today? Um, nothing really. I guess I'll start drawing now that I'm. That's right. See how I keep you busy. <laughs> no, I was. I was actually. I was working on my Cintiq and I was drawing, and like an idiot, I just started moving stuff around and I hit the power cord with my foot. Totally knocked out everything. Computer, Cintiq, everything. So that's when I started Here's watching thing, Star Trek. Right? So like you, you know, <clears throat> and I'll get going here in a second. Here's my advice to you, right? Is you got two things you need to look at saving up. So first you got your employment situation, which you'll you'll work out one way or the other. <clears throat> and then two, with your art, things you need to save up for, right? Mm -hmm. One, you need a printer. Two, you need a six hundred dollar PC. You know? You can get right. one for about six hundred bucks. You can go through Dell Outlet, you'll get plenty of RAM, hook your shit up. You'll be able to do all this from one computer while we talk. You know what I mean? Right. So that's uh, that's your long-term goals before you get you know Xboxes and all that other crap. That's what you need to do. So, um, alrighty, let's get started here. I'm gonna start with the W3 Copic marker right here to kind of do some base shading. I'll get this rolling. Going over my shaded tones here. Did you go job hunting today? Uh, no, I, I mean I reapplied at some of the like that place I tried last night that when the internet went out wrong or whatever it did. Yeah. So I reapplied there and I was looking at the different college jobs, but Jessica stayed. My wife stayed home from work today because she was up late working on our finals and she just woke up feeling kind of weak and I was like, yeah, just you know take the day off, relax. So just kind of hung out with her. So I didn't do much. Plus I was up till what 4 a.m. last night on on the last video. So yeah. I was kind of I was kind of didn't get much sleep last night. It takes me a while to fall asleep. It's not just like I'm like hey I'm gonna get out the podcast and boom I go to bed. It's like another hour or two. So I got to see the finished Luke, which you know looked awesome. But oh, nice. it's just. It's a matter of laying there for a good hour until I finally get tired. Cause, I mean, I can't really do anything to burn off the energy during the day. I can't, you know, we'll go for walks. Like, we went for a walk, and we'll do, like, stretches and stuff, but not like before where I had that physical labor job, and, you know, I'm physically tired by the, you know, 5 o'clock. That's the bad part. You know, find a way to burn well, it's off It's been a while since you entered the job market, you know. My advice to people... You know, like, I think it's to always be looking. You know what I mean? You don't just be like, oh, I got a job. And, well, you know, then you start rationalizing why you don't look for the other one while you're in the job. Right. Well, they, they treat me pretty good. And, you know, it's a lot of effort. No, no, you always look, man. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck there. Right. I think my excuse was always, well, they give me the time off for my comic book events. And, you know, they give me shit about it. But, you know, I can always take off whenever I need to go to an event or a Comic Con to sell my art. Yeah, you know, not just you know justifying all the other bullshit that we all put up with. I'm broke, but I'm happy in a sense. No, I don't know what the job market is like out there. You know, it's it's horrible. Desert communities are tough. You don't really have a growing industrial base, you know. Right. Which is weird because you generally have a growing population, so you think you need more stuff, but so much money to go around, I suppose. Need some I mean, kind of 
Go ahead. Yeah, that's why we're looking at, you know, Seattle or somewhere like that, or at least she wants to find some kind of internship out there and, you know, and then I can work wherever. I don't care as long as I have time for the art. Oh, no place she can clean cars all day. <laughs> Detailing Lexuses. It's brutal work, though, dude. <clears throat> I told you. Constantly look. Best bet, dude, man, in my opinion, for your money, is trying to get into one of those sign shops or something. That's possible, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's what I'm going to look at the next couple days and just kind of maybe make a quick... I like making shit, too, it. dude. Like, And I'm not good at building things, but signs I can do. You know what I mean? Like that... Laying out the, the typography, lining everything up, taking the vinyl, laying it down. At least I was building something, you know? Right. Like, it wasn't like, what did Rob do? Oh, well, that's what I did. You want to come over here and beat me, you know? <laughs> Check this shit. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like those jobs where it's like, what I do is like kind of hypothetical, you know? Like, I like to have something to show for my effort. Right. Be a lot of flicking with the brush on this one. Are you doing that to give it that uh, more just random hairlines, or? It's also how I just mix colors. But yeah, yeah. I'll give it that that texture look in the end. Yeah, it was then it adds motion. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, which is also a good technique. I mean, before. You know, you told me to flick the the brush on it. I was treating them like like those Prisma markers where I'd push down so hard. I even broke a a tip off one before. You should never break a tip off a Prisma marker. Right. <laughs> it's pressing well, really hard, bro. Well, no, off the off the brush ones. You know, from going from the side, and then I just I wasn't flicking it. I was more just. I pushing. can use those fatty markers too, man. It's the same technique. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, you always just want to like go light and kind of. Work it in. I mean, you don't be like, you know, that kind of shit. Well, you, I mean, you saw how I, I used, you know, I was drawing very frantic now that. Oh, yeah, that's where I was like, I got to see how you draw. And you're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got to see what you're up to here. Nonsense here. It's one step away from, you know, we got your tongue out on the side of the mouth. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, what are you doing, dude? You know? Is it that difficult? Is it so. I just think that when certain when you see people drawing and they're like really kind of like, <laughs> it's like you're not. You, I know for one thing you're not in a creative place. You're like trying to make this perfect drawing or something mm -hmm. or whatever. Like you're not. You're in a very analytical mindset. It's um, it's not a place of creativity. It's not like you can just like kind of like tick mark something around and kind of like shoo 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 shoo. You know, and kind of build an idea. Um, some of that frustration comes when you just don't understand what it is you're doing and you're kind of hoping something works out like right. if you don't know what you're going to draw you have to stop and think you know even if it's just a fucking Batman drawing like, just stop and think and see Batman in your head you know kind of act a little something out like picture it if you can't, if you can't see it it's just going to be ten times harder I mean the whole point the whole end goal is to draw the pictures in your head right all right. Take the pictures from your head and make them real. So, I got cats asking me last night on the YouTube, you know, if I would, you, could you please make speed paint videos? These take, and I'm like, like first off, these videos are starting to end up at my top watched. You know what I mean? So, this is just me drawing live, record on YouTube, making a speed paint of at least maybe one per series. I, I, I guess I could look at maybe trying to do that maybe once a week or once every other week, you know? Right. Like, rip the video down one week and then record audio and put it up the next. So, like, maybe I'd have one from Shredder, one from Star Wars. But, I mean, there's no guarantee those videos even get seen. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's hard for me to tell. I don't know. So, a lot of effort for that sort of thing, you know? So, but I can't do them for all of them. 
I'm not in the making video business. You know, I don't got a green screen here. I'm not. You know, yeah. <laughs> I make videos all day. I get my my money off the. You know, I make my money off making the art. This is all bonus shit, as far as I'm concerned. You know. Uh, I will at least attempt that. And I can use the however many videos were, you know, like a, this right here is just like the making of this and the Darth Vader have a lot of hits, you know, so I suppose I could do a whole speed paint of color in this. But then it leaves me out of it, and that's no fun. Who wants to watch that? Yeah, well, it's gonna probably, it'll be like eight minutes long. What? We'll just have to talk really fast. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll delete all that. That's the bonus for hanging out here. They get to hear you. All right. Yeah, then. <clears throat> yeah, so I was concepting out a bunch of monsters, and I'm going to do um, a set of next time we do a power prints. Call it creature vania. It's sort of the, the the basis for it takes place in the world that Game Cave exists. There's a certain land in Game Cave called Ravenstein, and in their world, when you die, you actually come back as a monster in Ravenstein. So you get a second life, and you end up like it's like a big party town. People are monsters and sort of live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. It's their last shot. You know, you're not really your former self. You're like another person in a way. You know, so. Just a way to like add a Halloween world and stuff that I was always wanted to do. So, and a lot of what I was doing with monsters, where I was taking these monsters, and I mean, believe me when I say, if you look at what I do with monsters, that a lot of that is me. You know, like, yeah, Kevin's like, I got a name, I want a werewolf, but uh, I'll, any day of the week I'll show you what they did and what I did. You know, All right? So I don't. Much as I like the guy, I'm like, you know, man, if I'm going to be doing this much work, I want to own the fuckers. <laughs> you know, like when I did the samurai insects, that's all me, you know? Like, the samurai insects weren't... That's just me saying, hey, let's, I can do some ninja drills, I'll make them bugs, and I'll make them samurai, and I'll get draw this armor. That would be fun. And, you know, samurai lords invading seem better to me than... He had these, like, trolls and spandex. It's really weird, man. <laughs> You know, and he was like, "Well, I think there, people are gonna think this is too much like the turtles." I'm like, "But that's the fucking point, bro." You know, yeah. it's an homage, man. Like, do you not understand? Well, you know, I'm like, Kevin, I'm not changing. You can come over here and fucking draw the shit yourself. <laughs> you know, early on, I think he just learned to trust me because people will go, "Oh, that dude looks awesome." You know? so. Yeah. So I've been concepting out the first five. You know. And those are things that can end up in Game Cave, too. Like, one of the characters, I can tell you right the bat, is in the first issue. This character named Jack-Jack. He's like a pumpkin-headed shaman kind of guy who speaks only in the words Jack. Jack-Jack. And, like, uh, he can summon undead monsters and stuff like that. Nice. I'll have some mermaid girls, so just in case What's-His-Face shows up, <laughs> I'm covered. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do these mermaid girls that have sort of like mech tails, and one one will be a playoff Ariel, and one will be played off more like the Ursula or slash fishy kind. You know what I mean? Like the creature. Right. They'll be sisters. That's why I would I would explain this stuff to Josh for years. That's why he was like, "Why are you hiring writers? Just fucking do it yourself." You know, like speaking of speaking of crazy stuff. Did you see the cover for Turok that Rob Liefeld did? <laughs> no. Nope. Bro, you, you sh if you could type this into your phone or something, yeah. you got it. Let me, uh... You have to see what is... I, mean, I hate to pick on Rob Liefeld because it's too easy, but it's almost like at this point he has to be trying to draw the worst versions of characters ever existed. You know, so like the new cover. Yeah, he just posted this on his Facebook. I saw it this morning. Okay, let's see. Turok, Rob... I used to love that game. I think I had I had it on Nintendo 64, right? Yeah. No, I can't be. Yeah. 
that and Goldeneye. Let's see. Just check his Facebook, bro. Yeah, that's right. I'm just going to go to his Facebook and... He's gonna be. He's one of the main people at the Amazing Con. Let's see, truck number one line art. There's a fully color version too. I've seen it. <sighs> I have hope. I think. I think I can make it in the, in the art world. It's like, are you even trying, dude? You know. Like I mean, the, this is a three-hour sketch. You know what I'm saying? Like, this right here, you know? Like, what the fuck, you know? I don't... I always said the guy doesn't like to apply himself, you know? Like, he literally goes for the quickest route, you know? The the main dinosaur reminds me of, like, kind of like a cheap version of J. Scott Campbell's dinosaurs. But all those teeth. Like, it's just like he... It's like he took... Sorry, I put my phone on vibrate. It's like he just took the pen and just went up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down for the teeth. And he's like, oh, fuck it. A thousand teeth, of course. They don't have gums. And then the arm on the animal looks like a, a vacuum snake or whatever it is. It's all noodle. Hey, blame the people that keep buying it. I told him, man, like, if he would apply himself, I could buy some stuff. You know, like, if you go look at Youngblood Issue 6 where he actually tried, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, all right, it's poppy comic art, but he he applied it. Like, it, it it's still it's not it's not it's not poor horrible stuff. It's just oh, here we go. Here's the here's the color version. I, I scrolled down. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> like the color makes it worse because there's just well, because there's nothing you can't hide. You see what I mean? Like, like it's hard to hide a bad drawing even with glowing colors. I think Unless the colorist is going to go there and really rebuild it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and that happened with that. Remember that a few of the Deadpool covers, he had a colorist that was doing that painted stuff over his pencils, and they were really rebuilding his stuff, you know? And that's got to piss the colorist off because it's like, man, how much did they get paid compared to him, you know? Like, unless you're hungry and you're trying to, like, prove your worth as a colorist, like, that gets old quick. Yeah. It looks like I colored it. It's like, like I don't mind leaving this all kind of sketchy because I'll build up color as I go along between the Copics and the digital paint, you know. But I'm doing that to my own art. This, I mean, what, what? I don't know, bro. You know. One thing that's always bugged me, and I know that this isn't major, but the fact that he never adds a string on the crossbows. Like the crossbows are always straight, and there's never a string. Like, I understand it when he did the young blood and that, I don't know the character that had the crossbow, but... Chef. Yeah, and he had, you know, okay, futuristic, whatever, maybe the arrows just fly on their own. But when it's Turok, Dinosaur Ages, and he has a straight stick, the longest arrow I've ever seen, and no, no rope, no nothing. It's like, how hard would it be just to draw some string on it? I just get a ruler and you... <laughs> right. I mean, I just don't understand how can you shoot a bow without a string. Well, because I, I long believe he's just like, it's a joke to him. You know, he's like talking, see, here's what I do. Look, I sell, you know. And I'm, I, look, I just stopped buying his stuff. You know, like, I refuse to support it. So people who bought Hawk and Dove over at DC deserve the trouble, you know. Yeah. He paid for that shit, you know. The guy would fucking apply himself. I'm not asking for him to fucking be Alex Ross. I'm asking for him to be, at least be a good version of himself. But it's a joke to him. I mean, this is a guy who's like, what, inking and driving? Look at me ink some page while I drive, you know? Like, like wow, you're just like the Jersey Shore of comics, you know? The situation... So, I don't know the whole backstory, but he he created Deadpool. So he does he own 
He owns all the Deadpool like rights. Oh man, dude! Look, uh, is it a long story? <laughs> I'm just saying, when a movie comes out for Deadpool, I imagine he'd cash in. You got to give me a second to work out to this, cause <laughs> let me explain what I'm doing here. I'm doing some creative edging, so makes the final piece look nice on the paper. I like to use a chisel tip for this. One, it gets me to use a chisel tip, so I feel like I justified the purchase for this fucking double-sided marker. But also, it just gives the edging a different look. Look, I, I don't really know what the specifics are. I haven't read the documents, okay? I haven't had, like, a legal briefing. I can tell you, having worked... We weren't allowed to do Deadpool shirts forever, up until this year, right? It did have something to do with Liefeld. You know, it had to do with, like, you know, he gets some credit, or he worked something in his contract back in the day, probably because he was selling so much, and no one ever thought Deadpool, which was really just a spoof of Deathstroke, Okay? Like, go look up Deathstroke over at DC, and you'll just see what Deadpool is. It could, it's all it is, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like Swamp Thing and Man Thing, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get it. Right. So, uh, anyhow, I don't know if it's just because he gets credit, like, you know, Bob Kane got that in the contract. He always says, created by Bob Kane, even though it's not entirely true. Um, but he does seem to have some, some control over that either through a form of payment or creative input for I, I don't I'm, like I said there's something there to that you know which is strange because you're like well it's worth to work for a higher company and I'm like well man you know like that is and that isn't true you know so which which if he is getting money off Deadpool it's just crazy to me how he can get money off Deadpool if that's true um but then if they make a book called the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man Years, you know, Todd doesn't see one fucking dime, you know? Right. I just, this is where, you know, growing up, I grew up in the era, I was a teenager at the right, at the era of Image Comics and Dave Sims, you know, fuck, you know, working for Marvel and DC, you know? So, I grew up with the sheer amount of animosity. When I, when I read what happened to you know, Jerry and jo Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, you know, how they were living together virtually almost homeless, you know, out of a shit bedroom apartment in New York City while Superman the movie takes off, you know, and what Neil Adam had to do to help fight for rights. And it's like, well, they should have known, and no, 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 I'm like, wow, you know, everyone's quick to fucking throw an artist under the bus in terms of their financial gain, but I swear to God, dude, you know, how many fucking people, like, flip a lid, oh, that, that, that song came from this, or, you know what I mean? Like, if you have a hit song that sounds like a Marvin Gaye song, oh, we could sue them, you know? They stole it, they stole it, you're a stealer, you're a stealer. You know, and I'm like, look, dude, if you create something, you know, you get paid a hundred bucks, and it turned out to make a billion dollars, you're telling me, you know, hey, the contract wasn't based around it making a million. Like, there's, you know what I mean? Well, you're screwed. Uh, now, that's the American fucking way of posing folks. And artists really do get the shit end of the stick. You know, mm -hmm. when they could use that leverage to get them some other stuff, and I'm like, not in this fucking industry. You know, with comics, it's always been about Marvel versus DC, and the whole fight growing up when I was a kid was like, well, you know, DC is like we sold more comics than Marvel, or Marvel be like we sold more comics than DC, and I've long since said that we are now we've moved out of comic books. Comic books are just like demo units for movies in a way. Um, and we're in the cinematic age. If we had a Bronze Age, a Silver Age, a Modern Age, we're in the cinematic age. You know, we're the mm -hmm. the actual the, the movies are more like comics than the actual comic books. And so, like, there was this thing on Slash Film today about how a kid wrote in to like he wrote into to DC talking about how what are they going to do to combat Marvel's movies, and DC's response to him was that our movies sell more. And I'm like, wow, they really are like talking. You know what I mean? Like, they are talking about their movie selling in the same way they used to talk about how issues of comics sell. Right. And I'm just thinking, like, well, fuck, dude, you know, like, in this day and age, what you, you could literally, you know, for, for, you could probably raise about 10 grand and make an independent movie with your own comic shit, you know? 
doing yeah. all your own web series. There's so many things you can do as independent creators. It's like, well, Rob, you're saying that while you're drawing fan art. I'm like, well, yeah, use your fucking leverage as an artist, you know what I mean, to gain a fan base. Hard to get a fan base with just original shit. I've, I've been trying. I spent the first part of my career doing nothing but that. You know, sold a lot of projects, and they get shelved. So I'm going to use this fan art to get noticed, but believe me, the original shit, you know, right. is what I'm actively working on. I'm, I'm eight to seven months out of my full-time job, you know, and within the year, there'll be plenty of original shit moving forward, you know, and my goal is to be able to just not do any of this someday, to only do my own stuff, you know, or do the stuff so selectly. So, but I, I, I know the market and I understand what's going on, you know, to that extent. And as an artist, you have to leverage everything you can, you know, creatively. Don't don't steal shit. Don't look at stuff and redraw it and take it. Make your own stuff, you know. But be creative, you know. A fucking life, oh man. That guy just. <sighs> Living the dream. Lazy fuck. <laughs> Lazy fuck. Hey, he's living the dream, man. You know. Minimal work for the money. All right, I'm going to start messing with Chewy's shadow area with this BV00. Tint some of the shadow more of a purple. It's going to be darker, so I'll use this. Like I said, I was actively like working. I got the five already concepted out in terms of how of what I want to do. Some names I'm still tweaking on, and I gotta like design the thing. But like I said I'll have those to start, and then I gotta have one one new girl for the sinful pack, which will be the shamrock like warrior chick, and she'll have dwarf minions. I have a similar layout to the cupid on that, you know. Mhm. Mm a little base with two or three minions and her and I'm going to give her a shamrock battle axe clover I'm going to do a new indigo too go for the little kitty at some point it's not my, my first thing but sh she'll get another version too a tall one not just the landscape and I can actually draw her with she has this long gown that comes down that goes into this purple that I really liked She's supposed to have like a little kitty that speaks in skull and crossbones and stuff. Nice. She was supposed to have a big fucking tiger cat. That was. That doesn't make any sense. Can you make it more of a? <laughs> These fantasy magazines want you to be Frazetta. Like that's it, you know. Mm -hmm. Be Frazetta. That's what works. Like, why can't I just be me? People will like this, you know. <laughs> I'll prove it. Did you ever watch or attempt to watch that Hansel and Gretel movie? No. No. Yeah. Look, just because I come up with something called Creature Vania, don't think I doesn't mean I think that should be a movie. You, you see what I mean? Like, I can appreciate artistic endeavors. You know, like, hey, this is my version of Hansel. That's cute to look at, or it's fucking awesome to look at. But that doesn't mean it should be a movie. You know? Right. The only reason I say it is because we, I remember we, it was on sale or something, and we got it. And I just, I tried putting it on today, and I, again, and I'm just like, oh god, this is bad. And I think a simple thing, like this is how I would fix the movie. They they use rock music during the fight scenes with these witches. And I'm just like, put some like whimsical music in here. You know, make it menacing, but make it instruments that modern are... Hollywood doesn't understand fantasy, bro. Look at their movie posters. You know? Right. I was just like, and that would fix it because it would make it creepy, because the witches actually looked halfway creepy decent. They had like this Broken yeah, up they had like a Drew Struzan style poster. They had a font that was actually, you know, fantasy like. And they, I mean, if they put the fucking Doctor Who guys in charge, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
Like, at least on the UK, like, look at the World's End. I mean, that gets a fantasy-style poster. Like, the Brits get it. Like, they, they aren't afraid to embrace, you know, fantasy. Right. But for, for some reason, this fucking country, everything needs to be modern. Like, you got a Prince of Persia movie. It's going to take place with magic in the Middle East and Persian folklore. Oh, yeah, it's going to have a big sans serif font. Fucking dicks. You know? <laughs> and Jake Gyllenhaal. It's like the least fucking creative thing I could think of. Yeah, John Carter, big bold fucking sans serif font. Like really, you know, like what about? Remember the He-Man poster had more fucking magic than that. Like Drew Struzan's He-Man poster. Yeah, that was part about that movie. But that would sell me. Right. <laughs> that was that was the best part of the movie. That was that one made it good. It it is changing. Like the 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 zeitgeist in terms of like the internet is like, they they get it. You know, we want movie posters and we want that magic to be there, but. You know, that's only going to come from when, you know, and it's slowly happening when independent filmmakers can, I mean, can, can gain more steam. And with Netflix and Amazon producing their own content, that helps, you know. You have things outside the system. I mean, you think Marvel could get Thor 2 to even be, look, we could say, hey, this and that about a Thor movie. But let's be honest, if any other studio had made it in Hollywood, right, like it would be a fucking travesty. Yeah. They wouldn't have let them do, like, sci-fi Asgardian shit, you know what I mean? Hollywood's right. the most inept, least creative force we got out right now. It's a parody of itself. They turn it into a Ben Stiller comedy, you know? Not to knock Ben Stiller. He's, he's actually a good writer and, and director, but you know, they turn this shit into fucking grown-ups. Ben, Thor star, you know, Loki would be Adam Sandler, and you know, <laughs> Thor would be Will Ferrell. <laughs> I was watching that Drew Strands and uh, it's Drew Zan. What it's Drew Zan? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I was watching that documentary, and they were, they basically were handing, let's say, actors or people who have been in one of his posters or just random stuff, uh, his portfolio, and let them look through it and comment. And uh, Thomas Jane, the Punisher, like uh, opened up the. Well, he played Drew Struzan in that movie, The Mist. Yeah. Like if you look at all the posters, he's got the um. He's playing Drew Struzan, essentially. Right, that that's, movie, they, which... they talk about it in the documentary. Like, he actually went to uh, his house, and he was trying to show him just how to paint kind of like him, just at least the hand technique. Right. And, I mean, and uh, Drew was just, like, tearing him up, like, no, this is horrible. You're imitating the worst painter I've ever seen, you know, really getting on his ass. And uh, Thomas Jane, you know, he liked it. He's a funny guy. But he uh, opened up the picture of uh, He-Man, the poster for He-Man, and he's yeah. like, holy shit. He goes, when does this movie come out? He's like, I want to see this movie. This looks badass. <laughs> he's like, when's this coming out? Oh, and he's like, and then someone's like, oh, they made. It. He's like, they made this movie. Holy shit! How did I not see it? You know, just totally mocking the hell out of it. It was great. Right. But yeah, they showed uh, the part of the mess, you know, where he's sitting there, and I guess Drew went to the premiere, and after the premiere, he went up to Thomas. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you totally fucked up everything I showed you in the studio. <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah. Luckily, it doesn't matter, right? All right. But I thought that was good. Yeah, Jessica's watched that thing like I think three times already. I gave you the Hellboy one. Yeah, no, she watches that too, and I watch it. I watched it; it was really nice. But she'll put it on; she gets all inspired and starts working, starts painting. So. Don't go looking for Drew Struzan jobs; he can't get hired. Right. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> That's the see. That's the thing. That's like the wow. I'm so inspired. I want to be like a great artist. But then, oh, by the way, they don't want you to draw. They want you to Photoshop fucking Professor Xavier's head into a silhouette of fucking Professor Xavier. You know. All right. Internet's a great fucking leverage point. I wonder what kind of stuff Drew is working on. Like, what's he do right now? Semi-retired. Well, he's doing some stuff at Mondo here and there. You know. But What's Mondo? 
Mondo, they're they do limited art prints. They're tied to the Alamo Draft House. Oh, okay. They're expensive, man. If you do manage to get them, they're usually limited to 500 and they cost 500 bucks, and they'll retail like a grand on fucking eBay. Wow. Yeah. A lot of them are vector-based, but, you know. You've seen, like, the Brian Stout posters and stuff. But he's definitely doing some stuff with them, you know. And of course, they're not going to art direct roosters in, which is nice, you know. All right. Just let him do whatever the fuck he wants to do. <laughs> This is E301. This is a very light brown. Do, 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 do. So people always tell me, you know, what would you cite your influence on? Like somewhere between fucking Image Comics, Drew Struz in. <laughs> Not so much in his drawing style, like, but I can do that. I can fucking take the photos and no, 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 no. I just don't enjoy it. I've been thinking I might do it sometime in the next year just for my own personal. And maybe I'll show people. I don't know. There are some movies I wouldn't mind tackling, but you know what happens is, is people generally think of Drew Struzan and they start drawing big heads. I'm like, that's actually not the kind of shit he liked to do. He was forced to do a lot of that. His right. compositions aren't really based around big heads, you know. That's always the studios like telling him to make the heads bigger. Right. You gotta show off the stars. I don't think so, actually. No, I'm not saying you need to. I'm saying that's what they probably. Yeah, that's always yeah. their big thing. But the giant people in there, like that, whatever. I don't know. Like then I get into like, well, I could just fucking draw a cool monster. Like I don't know. What uh, it's a couple of movies you'd paint posters for if you if you could. I mean, you can, Question. but I'm saying. Good question. <laughs> and it gets into, like, well, what would I do, you know? Yeah, let's hear yeah, it. I don't know. Like, do do I go for the money, or do I fucking do whatever I want to do? You know? Just for fun. Just if if you're just painting. Not for the money, not for what would sell, but what some ones you would like just to see you tackle. Maybe Better Off Dead would be kind of cool. Yeah. So you don't know the movie, right? John Cusack. Yeah. I know it. I like it. Maybe Gross Point Blank. I like those kinds of movies. Yeah. The first Crow movie would be cool. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I know you would say that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'd like... Yeah, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> shut, up, shut up and take my money. <laughs> you know, I told you. Do I go for the money or do I go for what I would like to do, you know? Right. What well, cares about better off dead, Rob? Right? Like, well, I like Iron Eagle. Like, are you kidding me? Like, well, you know, like, I sorry. Know. Don't be so quick to assume. I knew what Better Off Dead was. I've seen, I've seen some good movies. I actually love. I like Cusack. I even like uh, 1408. I don't care what people say. I liked it. I love that one. What was that one, dude? Starts with an I. Was that? It was an identity? Was it? Uh, they're, they're at the motel. In the rain. Yeah. In the rain. Yeah, it's all rainy and it's like a horror movie. I don't want to give away the ending. 1408 is the only horror. No, 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 no. No, this is way before 1408. I think it's called Identity. If you haven't seen that, you're missing a good movie. Uh, we, we, we have it. We have a copy of it, but I think Jessica's watched it. I haven't. Well, you missed a really good movie, bro. I have it. I mean, I can watch it. Well, you missed a good movie. I haven't missed it yet. I just yet to watch it. It's not like it's not like it's, all the copies are gone. 
They'll never They're gone. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Yeah. They jump ship. Yeah. It would be fun to do some for TV shows, you know. Like like Seinfeld would be fun, Married with Children would be fun. Sherlock. You know? well, again, you know, like that would be going for the money, right? Like Well, I mean you that's where you all the big it. fan base. Yeah, I enjoy it, but you know what I mean? Like Right. But yeah, I guess I could do a Sherlock, but I mean there's plenty of girls out there. I mean there's a fucking plenty of people who do some pretty dope ass Sherlock stuff. I mean I, but again, to me that's something that's like relevant now, you know. Right. I told you, like, if left to my own devices, I would just do things that I enjoyed, you know, like when I was a kid more than even now, you know? Right. If you went for the money, you'd do like a Doctor like, Who. I would do one for WrestleMania 3, you know, when Randy got the fucking title and shit. Like, I know it sounds stupid, like, that's what I would, but I understand, like, you know, sometimes when I tell you, hey, you know, sometimes you probably shouldn't do the shit you want to do, <laughs> you know, like, unless you can really afford to just lose money on it. I learned my lesson with that hope print. Yeah. And she looks like she's suffering from really bad alcoholism, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I, I sat right there. I'm like, I shouldn't even fucking... Why am I even doing this? You know what I mean? I got other shit to do. So if anyone's going to be at uh, Amazing Arizona Con, I'll be selling hope prints. They're really awesome. Rob colored them. You should come on down and buy one. Yeah, really horrible stuff. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. You're gonna, I like the way the Magneto came out. I mean, it was a lot of effort on my part, though. Uh, for everyone listening, <laughs> my shit sucks. No. Those are not my words. Those are Rob's words. Uh, well, you know, sucks is, is uh, harsh, and I can go there. I can definitely say on that one you did not apply yourself. You know. I didn't know how to apply myself. Well, that's what you're working on. Right. I'd say, I hate telling people you're horrible. It's like, no, because, see, here's the thing. You can see good art. Like, like I go, well, what do you like? You know, you start naming off stuff, and you like this, and you can, you like it. But, you know, getting to the point where even your stuff is just, you know, constructible, it, it you know, like, there, there's, what, what about that pose? I'm just trying to say, okay, Let's take aside from the fact that you put effort into it and you cared about it. It's your efforts, and I'm not knocking you as, as an artist in terms of you <laughs> trying to do something. Just think about it. What what emotion is is that invoking? You know, agony. Just like randomly drawing something that makes no fucking sense. Like I thought it was more of like the power, like just overcome with the power, and she's on her knees yeah. and she's powering. Yeah, 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 no. Doesn't work, bro. Yeah. But luckily, luckily, I did such an awesome job on the colors. <laughs> Look, I've showed people stuff I used to do. Remember the red Monica? You know yeah. what I mean? I knew I fucked that up. Do you think I ever turned that into a print? You know? Yeah. Did I pay someone a hundred bucks to fix my art? You know? No, but you know what? That was that was the drawing where I was like, this has to stop, right here and now. You know? I was like, I produce no pinups. I produce no fan art. I produce nothing until I get this shit fixed. And I don't have to have someone fucking tell me that shit. You know. This is a fucking joke was my answer to me, you know? All right. Well, I mean, I realized it pretty much last last Phoenix Con. I was like, I need to, I need to get my shit right. I mean, that's why I haven't made a print since. You know, I haven't Right. I'm like, there's nothing... Well, do you really want to convince people to buy your art, or do you want them to walk up and go, "What? Oh, you, can I get this? Like, right. that's, that's what you want, right? And so, if they're not doing that, well, what about it? Don't tell me it's the fucking character. Like, I always say, oh, Rob, you know, like when you were like, oh, what's the number one... I get why you're asking why these characters people choose, but think about this. If Who the fuck knows what that Cupid is? I'll put that Cupid up and sell it. You know what I mean? Right. It's irrelevant what the character is. The question is, are you able to invoke an emotion with your art? You know? Regardless of style, whether it's animated or realistic or whatever, can you invoke an emotion? And to me, that art is not invoking an emotion, you know? It's looking like, well, you know, it's amateur hour at Comic-Con. Good for you. Ho hope it works out. 
Yeah. I just move on. I don't even talk to folks like that. Like, I'm not the guy who's like, let me show you what you could do. I could care less, you know? The the less more artists apply themselves, the easier it is for me to sell work. So, you know? Um, if I say something to you, it's simply because, like, I genuinely care that, look, what are you trying to do here, you know? What do you want to do with this? What do you want your stuff to look like? To feel like? When people say, you know, Brandon James or Lead Heavy, well, what, what is that going to invoke? Right, you know, and 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 can if you can't get to that point, I don't know, because you're then you know what stage you're at. You're not at the invoking an emotion stage. You're at the getting your shit together stage. And I don't care if you're 30, 22, 45. You you can do it. You know, age is not a prerequisite. I think maturity and patience. You know, you have to have the maturity to sit through. You know, even several, you know, even, some people can't even sit for two hours doing this shit. You know what I mean? It drives mm -hmm. me nuts. Well, how do you do for six hours? I'm like, six hours is fucking fast. You know, I was at a con, and um, the guy was looking at my stuff, and he was like, how long does it take you? And I was like, oh, that took forever. I was like, it was like, you know, probably 18 hours, you know? And he was like, dude, he's like, he takes two weeks on a piece, you know? He was a really good painter, you know? But he's like, I take two weeks. And I kept thinking, two weeks? You know what I mean? Like, I I get no two weeks, you know, on one right. piece. But I have to remind myself sometimes, too, that, co you know, commercial art, it's all about speed. You know, Struzan will say that, too. You know, like, only the first three seconds of the Hellboy. It's like, look, you know, I got to get this shit done now. You know, not tomorrow, not fucking a week from now, but now. When they call me, you know, he's the last person on the list to be let known, you know? So you got to get through all this other stuff. That isn't when you open up your books and learn how to be an artist. You know? Like, that door fucking come and knock and you better be ready. You know? What do you know? And I'm like, well, I know that I'm fucked up too and I'm working my shit out, you know? And it would piss off other artist friends of mine, so I just stopped, you know, talking to them about art and I would just make stuff and let it sit up there and move on, you know? Sometimes I did really well, sometimes someone else did really well. But I just found that the more I talked about art with artists, the more they just get pissed off at me. You know, and I don't I'm I got enough enemies in this world. I don't need I don't need them hating me too, you know? Because I really don't you know, what do you think? I'm like, I don't I'm honestly it comes from all the years I went to Comic Con and I'd watch Neil Adams rip people, you know? Or or you know, fucking half the other guys, editors and stuff, and I would just see common mistakes, and I'd see myself making them. But, you know, you spend hours on something, you want to be told, oh, it sucks, and I'm like, well, you know, alright, it's great, you're the best ever. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. But I do think that if you are, you know, if you're if you're an artist, who who cares about your work? You legitimately care about what you do. Like you you think about the kinds of leads. You think about the shapes you're using. You're thinking about the colors you're using. If, if you're that kind of person, you do give a shit. Um, you know we're always like looking for for ways to improve or for ways to you know push it forward. Right. And um and 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 how how are you supposed to if you can't even have the conversation with yourself, you know, how can you even expect to do that, you know? One, one second. If you're going to get butt hurt every time someone says some shit. Rob sounds like he's having fun. Yeah, well, I hate when I roll over the cord, you know? <laughs> right. I'm like, it's a yanking and shit. But, I mean, look, you know, I put out an email. I always do surveys with my backers. I'm like, you know, well, hey, if we only have, like, if these many people have only pledged a dollar, no, 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 no. What do you, you know, what do you guys think of, you know, what's holding you up? Or, and I get I get feedback. I get like, well, you know, your art's not really my thing. Don't take it personal. And I'm like, well, I can't. 
you know, as an artist, you can't make something for everybody, you know? Right. Like, if you make something, someone is just not going to like what you do. No matter how good... There's people I know who can't stand Alex Ross. You know what I mean? Can't fucking stand Alex Ross. It like, doesn't matter what that dude paints, they're not going to like it. You know? So, some people just... You, you can't... As an artist, you have to be willing to create things that doesn't appeal to everyone. That doesn't mean you're a bad artist. I sort of think bad art just comes from like laziness. Like if, if someone is is just completely, they don't even know basic shit, and they're expecting you to treat them like they're like the Rob Liefeld thing. It, the guy is just not applying himself. You know, and it's fucking frustrating because this guy has made millions of dollars, bro. You know, right? And I'm like, well, I keep telling people, why do you? Someone's buying this shit, you know? And most people don't care. Like, the internet will be like, oh, this guy can't draw, no, 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 but the average consumer doesn't give a shit, you know? Right. And I can prove it because he keeps making millions of dollars. <laughs> you know, I like some of those characters. I like Prophet, like the 90s stuff. I don't care for this new shit. You know, I like Bad Rock and Shaft and Chapel. I think it's, it's fun stuff, you know, for me. It's the stuff I grew up with. It's fun. You know, I get a kick out of it. <clears throat> Maybe I should make a a t-shirt like you made back in the day. <laughs> sure that'll go over well at con. Lifefield can. Yeah, you can, but you better have dope art to back it up, bro. <laughs> right. Like a total fan, you know what I mean? You can't be kind of a halfway shitty artist bagging on another one. You know, like... And I, I'm going to tell you right now, you keep doing what what we're going, you actually apply this stuff. Within a year, dude, your your portfolio won't even look the same. You'll be able, you know, within two years, it's gonna, you're gonna be a, a thousand percent different artist. Mm -hmm. You know, but you really have to apply yourself. And and, and I don't want to hear how, uh, oh, I was tired when I came home from work. You know. Well, that's easy. I don't got a job. Yeah. Well, you will. And those excuses get in the way. Like every now and then, I get it. I get it from, you know, so sometimes every now and then Josh is like, well, you know, my kid, and I'm like, look, dude, here's the thing. I love you. I love a kid, but no one cares. <laughs> get this shit done, you know? <laughs> I don't fucking care, you know? Like, like, sometimes he has conversations with me about, you know, you know, Rob, we got to get this shit launched. Fuck, I don't care if there's, you know what I mean? He has that with me. You're, you're, you're blowing this out of proportion. Just get the work done. So... Plenty of artists hustle, you know, and that uncomfortability when you come home and I'm tired. You know, what? this is how you relax. You know, drawing is now if you're under a deadline and you got to go produce magic for people, that could be stressful. But if you're just coming here and making better art for yourself, I mean, really, that's stressful. You know, that's something you don't want to do. Sitting on that couch is somehow going to make you feel like your life's meaningful. I don't believe that. You know? Alright. Alright, so Chewie has sort of waves of shade, right? It's like one, two, three. So I'm gonna do that with the uh the warm grays to darken that. Oh. Try a five see there's yeah, five's got just enough contrast. I'll probably have to throw some more color over this because when you start to add cool grays and grays and stuff over it, it can oxidize the color a little much sometimes. You get to glaze it back over. It's like if a book shipped late back in the day, but the art was great, I didn't care. You know what I mean? Well, that's on right. them because they got to make more money, you know, with less books, essentially. But if the book shipped late and it looked like a piece of shit and it had 18 fucking inkers, you know? Like if the inker says D hand, you know? <laughs> that's usually the acronym for, like, fucking multiple hands or, you know, different people working on different hands. Right. Yeah. 
is now you're a huge Star Trek fan. This is off topic, but it popped in my head, like normal. Is the original Wrath of Khan? Now that I've seen the new stuff, and you know, is it? Would I be impressed going back and watching it, the original? I don't know. Go watch it and tell me. Because <laughs> I, I looked at pictures and I'm like looking at Khan, and he looks old as shit. He looks like a buff grandpa. Well, because they first it, it, this movie, Into Darkness, is sort of a cross between the original Star Trek episode, Space Seed, and Wrath of Khan. It like kind of blends them together. You know, like he first appeared on Star Trek in an episode called Space Seed with the Botany Bay when they were young. And um, and the movie takes this sort of like one-off episode. It took a little thing. Oh, we put him on a planet. No, 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 no. It took this thing that happened in the show and then. Made it look like, hey, what happened to these people was not great. And Kirk, it's the idea that, you know, at the end of Star Trek, uh, they resolve everything and move on, and you never hear from him again. Well, he was, he, he, Kirk never bothered checking up on these folks, you know, like, and they got just ravaged and destroyed, you know. And the only way they survived was because Khan was sort of a genius, and he wants his revenge on Kirk. So. It's hard for me to say, bro, if you would be impressed because you 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 go, well, the special effects or it looks this and that. I mean, I can't. You know what I mean? It's right. a very com. Just watch it. You know. But if you don't understand what it comes from, you gotta at least, you know get the space seat episode. You got this, and you have to think about at the time. So I don't know, dude. You know, Star Trek fans. You know, they're they're ravenous. But it's still a good movie. I don't care if they're old as shit. You get ageist or something? Yes. Yeah, well, Gandalf could kick your fucking ass. All right. <laughs> Bring it, Sir McKellen. That would be some shit, though. Like, I meet him at a con. Bump into him. He gets all mad. He's like, what the fuck, dude? You... Are so fat, and then like he hits you. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Who would have thought he'd throw the fat thing out? That dude, man. <laughs> it's mean, Rob. It's a mean joke. Wait, wait, wait. I'm I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> to compared to him? Yes. It's a lean guy, bro. No one's no one's ever. No one's ever called me that. <laughs> I don't even... I don't know to, uh, click, click. Whack Packer. Whack Packer, you and that shit. I'm not going to buy any more stuff from you. I'm done. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see about that. No, I'm done. Then the crow thing shows up. No. Nope. I'll just... Uh, it's easy to say that when you don't have money. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I'll just rip it offline and then go print my own. Oh. <laughs> oh I see. This now will be the last talking. cast, Brandon James. <laughs> right. Uh, I can't tolerate that. The uh, Rob does not abide. Yeah, that's the if worst. I take that shit from you, then I have to take it from everyone. All you, right. You are the example. I saw someone post the other day. They have a website now called like theartthief.com or something. Have you seen that? Yeah, a lot of it's trolling though, dude. I can't, I can't get into all that. They got this layout from this layout shit. I'm, I can't get into it, Brandon. You uh, know what I mean? It's that, it's that anal about it. You know, like I can't. You know, I just can't get into it. I'm, I'm gonna end up on there. Rob took this from that. Like when I did the Psychonauts thing, mm-hmm. like I had one piece to do Psychonauts, okay, when I was at play. And, and dude, the piece was about Brutal Legend. I should have made the art about Brutal Legend, but I was like, I want to fucking draw Psychonauts. Fuck, I don't give a shit. And so I had one piece. I wanted to fit as many characters as I could, and I wanted, to be di- wanted it to be dynamic, you know? So for me, there's a certain layout that the Japanese use. They use it on the Power Stone cover. They use it on the, the Wario thing. It's usually, they take a map, right? Mm-hmm. A curved surface, and they'll have like a land. Sometimes maybe it's high rule, right? And it curves. Then they'll have a character coming up at you and pointing or doing something. It's a very common layout, you know, mm-hmm. in Japan. And I'm like, well, that would be fun to do. You know, it's different for Psychonauts, and it would allow me to put all these different characters. And you know, it's a gaming sort of layout. And I got knocked to fucking hell from some people. You ripped the layout from Power Stone, and I'm like, ripped. You know what I mean, like. 
ripped. I mean, first off, it's not a one to one. You know what I mean? You can't like put it over and and match them. It's right. just the same. That's like saying, oh, you know, uh, doing you know a character where their fist comes towards you is a fucking rip. You know, like well, that's just a common compositional layout. There's no fucking way to create something totally new. You know, new. And never been done before to me is this minimalistic shit where it's a fucking parking sign character, you know? As fucking Thor. Like, I hate that shit, you know? I'm like, I don't even get that movement, the minimalistic thing where everything looks like a fucking icon from a handicap sign. <laughs> so the art thieves thing, they go, they go too far, man. And, like, there'll be shit on there that clearly says after somebody. And they're like, oh, look, they ripped it. You yeah. know, and you're like, hey, but it's, it's... A lot of the times when they do a composition, like... Hey, on Star Wars, you know, a, the prequel comic, they have Obi-Wan doing the fucking Days of Future Past cover, right? It's because the storyline is, like, invoking Days of Future Past. So it's just sort of like a, it's homage in itself in a way, you know? Like, right. they'll do it in a way to sort of, like, let you know what kind of story is in there. But then it ends up on Art Thief, you know? So I have a real hard problem with those sites. And, and, and look, if they really want to be the internet police, you know... Are there people that, and meanwhile, meanwhile, there's about a million eBay stores, you know, that just fucking take art off Deviant and put it on cell phone covers. That shit's not an art thief, you know? A lot of them are going after artists. And I'm like, this is this is that thing, dude, where it's like, wow, artists oh, are continually getting this shit, you know? We're going to keep attacking artists. Then they go, but what about Rob Granito? And I'm like, well, okay, but how many people are Rob Granito, you know? And more to the point, look at Rob Granito, right? Like, how many artists go to con with totally original shit or they're doing their own fucking thing? They don't get comp, no space, no table. Rob Granito gets comp, put on panels, you know? Yeah. So it's like, these these cons don't even do their own fucking research and they should be in the place to know that, hey, that guy is 22 years old. He didn't fucking work on the Batman animated series, you know? Right. It's so ridiculous, you know? The lack of accountability. So... You want to talk about art thieves? Why don't you just talk about all the fucking studios that hire people and don't pay them? Like um, this girl Cindy, um, she knows she knows Rob the Balfour. She, her and her husband moved out here. Cindy Merlek, and I've been friends with them for a little while. And helped her get this job over at Mad Engine, and she was telling me she did some shit for like Blue Water or one of those kinds of companies. And it's like they had her working on shit, you know, it's typical fucking Blue Water comics. And meanwhile, you know, like they had someone else just draw all this stuff and then they never paid her. Oh, that's fucking art thieving, you know? You waste an artist's fucking time and effort and don't even pay them. Because you're too chicken shit to fucking tell them that you don't want their art or you found someone cheaper to do it. Right. I mean, I haven't checked out the site. I just saw the post. And then I just relay it to you. Usually you're my Google. I don't have to uh, actually research things. I'm just like, hey, Rob, have you heard of... And I say something Well, big. I'm not infallible, dude. You know what I mean? I can generalize and, and whatever but I can tell you that a lot of that stuff ends up just being like this layout looks like this layout thief and I'm like you know fucking I'm not I'm not getting into this you know right it's not something I want to be a part of I don't care I don't want to you know partake in it I have no opinion on it you know no comment you know when it comes to like what do you think of because because it's just like first off if, if <laughs> What do they do? Do they just go around comparing images all day? Meanwhile, they're all fucking watching a movie that's just like something else. You know what I mean? They've seen before a hundred times. They're listening to music that's exactly carbon copy clone of everything else that they're listening to. You know? There, there is somewhere in there an intentional... like like. There is somewhere in there meaning to do wellness, right? Like, like they mean to do well. Oh, we want to make sure artists are being represented. It generally turns into an artist witch hunt. Right. And, Americans are the least cultured when it comes to art. Sad to say. You know, our schools do not encourage art. If you have an art class, it's the biggest joke there is. Compared to what you get when you're in, you know, France or Germany or somewhere overseas. Like, our, our, our culture is weird. So, you know, like, to sit here and have a conversation about, you know, whether this composition came from this, this, and that. You know, chances are some fucking artist in the 16th century invented it. I mean, you want to see some some a great documentary that's coming out? It's called the Tim Vermeer. Have you seen this? No. Nope. Or heard about it? Nope. So Penn Gillette is narrating it. He's producing it. Um, his buddy's an engineer, 
right? A guy like built shit for NASA or airplanes or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, don't be like, Rob, you actually did this. Well, you get the idea. He's an engineer. He's not an artist. But there's this whole thing going about how Vermeer, who's a Renaissance, pre-Renaissance sort of middle age uh, painter, he started bringing real, like, realistic light sources to, his, to, to art. It was a huge jump. You, know, you go from stick figures to the Renaissance with these crazy light sources and realistic painting. And people just go, well, it's because it was the age of enlightenment. You know, we were all geniuses. And I'm thinking, like, in my mind when I was a kid, I, I never got how you just invented that shit. You had to really be studying. or So what he figured was that these guys were building these light boxes that would just project shit down. Like, and there was a way to do it. So Because the, the, the light refractions and the way they were blurring paints, were there's no way the human eye could see it naturally. Our mind interprets things. Right. So unless you could, you literally had it down on the paper and you were painting over it, you wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, so he does it by recreating. He he he, he rebuilds what he thinks the guy would have used. He would have had access to. He had you know knowledge of. He rebuilds the contraption that would allow him. And then this guy paints a Tim Vermeer painting. You know, uh-huh. almost completely accurate. You know, for a guy who doesn't even paint, just to prove. You know, that they were essentially just painting over photographs. You know, what does that say then? You know, does that take away from something? Does that, you know? Right. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, art for me is about not like, it's not like, oh, did you come up with that from your it, your head? Or, look, like, all of it's from your head in a sense. You know, I'll hand you a pencil, I'll, I'll have a pencil, and we'll have two different results, you know? Right. The question is, is whatever you made to me, does it, does it, does it invoke an emotion that I respond to? You know, pretty ugly, those things are irrelevant to me. You know, ugly stuff can invoke an emotion that, you know, gets me to buy something too. I don't think Joan and Vasquez creates the most prettiest art, but I like it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I like his fucking Johnny, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac covers and shit, you know? So, but uh, yeah, the documentary comes out later this month or next month. Um, so you you know, I saw something where they were referencing like Renaissance light box or something somebody posted. So it's probably the same thing. Yeah, it's based off that. It's a documentary. Tim Vermeer's whatever. Vermeer. Believe me, you look it up, you'll you'll get it. Right. Worth watching. That's funny. I mean I experienced this myself when I got into T shirts because I can draw a lot of mechanical stuff. And so I'm working on West Coast Choppers, and I'm like, oh, you know, these shirts that they have motorcycles that are all, like, chromed out and shit. I was like, yeah, you draw this, right? So I'm drawing fucking motorcycles, literally building the construction, drawing all the spokes, all the fucking chains, and they're looking at me like I'm nuts, you know? All right. Like, what are you doing, dude? You just fucking airbrush. You take a photo, you turn the opacity down, and you airbrush over it, you know? That's how you get it to look realistic. And I was like, wait, really? <laughs> yeah, your stuff looks like a drawing, you know? I'm like, well, that's because it's a drawing. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> I was like, but I don't want a whole portfolio of traced photos, you know? Right. Stupid me, you know? <sighs> at the one-hour mark. Let me take a photo. Where is my iPad? I think it's in the other room. Give me a minute.
All right. Found it. Yay, Rob's back. People tell me when you talk trash, they boast comments. So, careful what you do. I'm quiet. I didn't even say anything while you were gone. All right. Last time you were gone, I just used the time to plug myself. That sounds bad. <laughs> Last time you were gone... I wasn't going to try to blow on your statement. Last time you were gone, I just mentioned all my sites, my Instagram and um, Twitter and all that. I've yet to talk shit because I know it'll come back to bite me in the ass. Now, in person, if someone asks me about you, then I'll talk some shit as long as they're not recording, but over this, I just keep quiet. As quiet as I can be with all the noises I make. Posted. Making copies. I gotta sneeze. Do it. <laughs> Epic. Sorry, guys. Yeah. It's my rabbit's mo here. I know it. No, the bunnies are getting to me. Cook, I'll make a soup. That's mean. Just kidding. I've never eaten rabbit or deer or elk or any of that. Just. Have I have I got any negative comments about me yet? No, no one cares about you. I know, right? Someone was encouraging you to sing the song, but I won't let you. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Which which uh? I don't know. Some wise ass. I know, but which which YouTube video was it? They left a comment. I don't know. know. Go search them. Oh, you son of a bitch. You're That's the awesome. laziest guy I know, dude. You have no job, nothing to do. You can't look at some video comments. There's guys rather, like maybe four or five of them to search her. Oh, just tell me the answers. I'd rather spend my time working on my art, obviously. Yeah, you were working on your art all day? Yeah. Watching Star Trek? That's a break, and you know, we ate food. <laughs> Other than that, no, I really, I really spend hours on the Cintiq doing the statue drawings. Then I do a couple hours here with you doing my sketching and drawing. I'm actually using it more. I'm using it more wisely now that I'm more healed up than I was in those first couple weeks. Because those first couple weeks I wasn't really doing shit, and even after. But right about the time you had me be a consistent person on your pod on the these YouTube videos, this is probably the. Oh, I know you weren't doing anything because I could see it. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You don't have to hide it from me. I'll just see the lack of effort. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can tell. Right. You know, and then I go and yell at Josh. I'm like, why the fuck did this fucker waste my fucking time? You know? Nice. I get really pissed off. I don't waste people's time. They give me advice, you know? Take like, that, Josh. And he's like, I don't know why that guy doesn't waste his time. I don't know. Cause he's... I'm like, no, it's not, it's, not, it's, it's not intentional. It's like he's trying to. He's just like, I hate that. I hate that. I want to get better. I get the advice, and then I don't do anything with it. You know? I'm doing and stuff. Another guy who recently did that shit to me. You know, like he wanted. He's a good guy. You know, I like him. But he was like, I also advice from like, you know, you should try. No, 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 no. He's like, oh, could you make that into an MPEG three for me? I'm like, okay, fine. You know what I mean? I'll take the time, make an MPEG three, upload the fucking thing, send it to you. Guy's done nothing. You know, nothing with it. I'm like, look, dude, you're wasting my. F you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a shit what you do with your fucking life. You know, I'm not asking a bunch of people to sit around trying to, you know, solve my life's problems, you know? Right. I think that's the thing. If someone did take their time, and someone did once, they once, 
you know, when I was first doing comic submissions and stuff, you know, he, I had a Starbucks lunch with him, and he was like, hey, you know, Rob, here's some advice I learned when I was shopping stuff around. You know, just follow a Z pattern, you know, when you're doing these comics. Just make sure people read in a doot, 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 you know? That's it, you know? Just so you, because I was like, doot, 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 you know what I mean? It was like all over the place. He's like, just do the fucking Z pattern. That's the biggest advice I got, you know? And you want to know what? Every fucking page I did after that had a Z pattern, because he was right. I'm like, I can work on the Z pattern, and then I'll work on other shit, you know? Once I got this shit down. I spent two years doing comics with Z patterns, and the pages never got printed. But, you know, not my fault. <laughs> Yes. <clears throat> but anyways, I stopped wasting time, and now I'm using it wisely. Spend hours on the Cintiq, draw on the statue practice and all other stuff, and then spend all this recording time drawn by hand. Yay! I would say, even if you don't feel like drawing, I mean, put a headset on and fucking at least clean your room. You know? I got a lot of cleaning done yesterday. I had a two-hour conversation with Josh. I just, you know what I mean? Put the headset on and I start cleaning. You clean? You actually clean the art room? That's some of it organized. Bro, this is this is three fucking Kickstarters mashed into one another. You know what I mean? Right, I know. This is not how I normally work. This is the result of a lot of fucking bam, 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 bam you know? A lot of what? You know what I said. I'm not going to repeat this shit. I will eventually, one of these times, get you to repeat yourself. I don't like repeating myself. I know you don't. So that's that's my that's my that's my my goal. I got to do something. I mean. You, you bust my balls so much, I gotta throw in something to just get you off. I know, off but game. I can I can revert it with you. You didn't pay attention, you lose. Am I right. giving you an opportunity to try and like pick apart the things I say and try to rag me for every little individual? That's not. I know that game. I invented that game. No, no, no. <laughs> I know what I said. I made a little sound effect, and you're gonna try and like goof on the sound effect because you have nothing. You have nowhere to go. I get it. Rob D. Check every podcast, bro. Rob D here. See, that proves you never listen to the podcast. And I knew that because you'd ask me questions that I answered in the podcast. I see. You would have known if you just listened. Well, I didn't have a reason to listen until I got on here. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, now you just listen to yourself. I, what I said was so funny and true. I'm, I'm the best. <laughs> uh, yes. And it's true, I know you think that way, because the first time you did it, then you go right onto YouTube. Hey, you guys feel about me doing my own podcast, and no one cares. <laughs> that was the best. Uh, then you try it, and you're like, wow, this costs money and time. I didn't even try it. I just saw what you had to do, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good with being on Rob's. I'm good. Let him have the headache. I think I'm going to attempt to record the next podcast on Google Hangouts with you here. And then I'll just download the audio, you know, uh -huh. off the YouTube and put it in the podcast. I'm going to try it that way, see if it makes my life easier. Of course, it could cut out. It could cut out, but I don't know, you know. All right, maybe you do a sample one. We'll just do one, and if it cuts out, it cuts out. I'll just deal with it, you know? Right. I, don't, I don't know what to do, you know? I wonder the person that wanted me to sing the song just wanted me off the videos or just wanted to see if you'd get pissed and actually kick me off. Oh, that, that, that's what they wanted to see. <laughs> they wanted to see you get mad and kick me off? Or do see how it, do you. it, do it, do I know. Right. They always want to see the fight, but then once the guy gets knocked out, nobody wants to be like, oh, shit. I'm out of here.
What if we got like a hundred people that wanted to hear it? Is that worth it? No, I don't care. <laughs> Come on, man. I'll get ten thousand downloads in my podcast. Don't give a fuck about a hundred people. You got you got to give a little. All right, you got to give in a little. No, I don't. Never give in. <laughs> Yeah. Never, never, never surrender. Never surrender. Never give in. Never give in. Never surrender. Yeah. No retreat. No surrender. They will never surrender on land, on sea. They will all fight in the air. <laughs> you know how difficult it made certain women to date me when I get like this. <laughs> Like no, I'm not. I, I'm not compromising on any level. Hey, great! You don't have to be here too. You know, like it doesn't go over well. You know, right. <laughs> but there is a part of me that's like, I don't care. You know, yeah. see how that worked? Right. It's because I spent so much of my life compromising. Is what it is. I spent the majority of my life trying to make sure everyone was happy, everyone was taken care of, but me. I was the last person, and then finally, it was like when I really wanted to become like a full-time artist. I realized that in order for this to work, it's me first. Everyone else can just take a hike. Because for some reason, when I would be sitting in my room, remember I went to my cousin's place to stay the summer in '98, right before I joined the army, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted the summer off. I'd been working a hundred hours a week for two years, dude, for my dad. Okay, no vacation. You know, and I just didn't want to work for three months. And I had money, you know. So and she, I would be sitting in her fucking kitchen, you know, drawing all day. And she'd just come home. And after a week, it was like, you know, what, is there anything else, you know, we could do? And I'm like, no, I'm doing it. I'm having, just you know, live your life. I'm here. And uh, then it was like, you know, I just feel, I feel, she, she was saying about herself, you know, I feel like I'm not doing enough with my life. And I'm like, I can't fucking, you know. <laughs> then it just become, you know. Really, you're there again? Oh, this cup you left out? And I'm looking at the whole apartment's clean. You know what I mean? But, oh, that fucking cup. You got me on that. You know, like, what is it about me sitting here that irks these people so much? You know? You know? So that's why I find it funny when... You know, I'll talk about, hey, you know, I want to make some money with this. I want to do this. And it's like, oh, you know, you should do it because you love it. And I'm like, fucker, you know what I mean? I've spent my entire life sitting in this fucker room doing this shit for free. You know what I mean? Because I love it. Don't tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing. What do you do? You go to a Christmas party in the last fucking 15 years? <laughs> I haven't. You know? Tell me I don't love this shit. You get to a point where it's like, look, there needs to be some financial return for this this level of effort. And if there isn't going to be one, I have to find something else to do. You know, because it is my life. I'm not waiting for this industry to go, Rob, you have talent. Come over here. We like you. Like, that's not happening. <laughs> Let's try that game. We like it. We like it when we don't pay you or we take 40 days to pay you or we only pay you 100 bucks, you know, for 20 hours worth of effort. What color is that? These are just warm grays. His gun is virtually black, so I'm just trying to... I'll probably add a little purple in here and a little bit of blue to kind of shift it towards metals. Mm -hmm. I was going to use cools, but... Eh, whatever. I'm, I'm going to use cools for his hand, I think. I want to contrast his hands because those are black, too. Do, 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 do. Right. 
Or not. I might go with more of a bronze color, even though that thing's supposed to be black. Uh, I don't know. It's a subject to change. No one really cares. All right. That's not the stuff I hear about. If his face was fucked up, I'd hear that to no end. I like the putty color. I haven't used it much in the past couple of days. This is putty. YG91. It's one of my favorites. Get a lot of use out of this. So you use putty for a lot of different... Yeah, it's one of those magic colors. It's got, I mean, for me watching the video, it's got like a nice, I don't know, bron like you were saying, chrome, bronze, kind of color, bronze color. Yeah, and it, and it can offset stuff too. Like I put it on reuse ghee and it then gives it that kind of like nice, you know, mm -hmm. yellowy but dirty kind of, you know. You put it on a little bit of the droids, you get a little bit of that. It can absorb some of the undercolor. That's why I tinted this stuff too, you know, these yeah. purple lines. Is there different putties or is there just one putty? Just one, YG91. YG9. Yeah, use the codes. Don't worry about the names. Cause sometimes they change names and shit. Right. YG91. Got to pick that up in a VO4 lilac. I'll use BVO4 here. Uh, see, it's going to saturate it too much purple. But let me take that and take the W5 and see if I can't. Yeah, that'll work. So it's a little overly purple, then I can use these grays to warm it out. And... One thing I don't that I hate when we record these is when I'm watching you as we stream, it's not as in high definition as it is when it's on the YouTube actual video. So that's why sometimes I go back and look just so I could see how well it looks because when I'm watching it, it's not as high quality as you know it gets posted as. It has to do with their little conversion thing. Yeah. They have a new algorithm coming out too, so that's going to make it even better. And more sharper. YouTube. That's why I just moved to, yeah, that's why I've just moved to YouTube, dude. You know? Chatting with me in real time doesn't... You know, I might move away from live stream and try Twitch or something too, you know? But... Because that Procaster software is pissing me off something fierce. The what? The Procaster software. Oh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, when you said what, I knew you didn't know what I was talking about. So. Right. I did the math. Or I could just agree with you. Yeah, yeah. The best thing but ever. I know you don't know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> you don't know. You're just agreeing with me. No, I, uh, pro yeah. caster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's where you cast like a pro. I get it. <laughs> that's like a fishing thing, right? Yeah. Pro caster. That's you bass masters. Cast out your line. I love that bass masters. I was thinking about the the Oculus Oculus Rift and just games that would really be crazy to play. And I was just thinking like you were talking about a go kart game like Mario Kart. Yep. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you got giant shells flying past you and Yeah. In the actual seat, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. So you feel 
Yeah. Like it right there. Yep. It's a dream of mine, man. I know it's not a... I'm an easy man to please. <laughs> Pilot wings would be dope, too. Yeah. Hang gliding and shit. Because I'm not going to a hang glider. You're at your fucking mind. Right. Yeah, but video game. Okay. Yeah, and survival horror games like Resident Evil creeping through a fucking like this alien game coming out. If it's actually good, I'd shit myself. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's that's the point. Now you get it. Or uh, what is it? Condemned or? Yeah, that first demo where the guys yeah. running between the fucking like wood panels and shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first time I even played <laughs> that demo. It's one of the best demos ever made. It's better than the game actually, and. Uh, but yeah, you go through that demo and this guy's running through wood panels. I was like, oh, holy shit, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, if I had that with the helmet on, I would just, I'd cry. I'm like, oh, I'm dead. It's and they throw me out that window and shit? Oh, that was right. awesome. Street Fighter, that'd be dope. I don't know about that. I don't... You see a fireball coming at you? Yeah, I like exploration games. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could even do a, I'd imagine, like a skydiving thing, because you're talking about the parasail. I was saying pilot wings, you know. Pilot wings had skydiving, it had hang gliding, shit like that. Yeah, because you'll never get me to go skydiving. That'll never happen. Right. Yeah. No. One. The heist the would be fun. You know what I mean? Right. Like, looking around the corner, there's a cops. Get in the van, get in the van, get in the van, get in the van! <laughs> Payday 2 be nice. Um, I honestly think football. I would like to try football on there. That'd be nice, like a Madden game. Well, even like they were playing a real-time strategy game in that demo, so you know, even if it was just your little guys on the field, you know? Right. Because you can actually look around and. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, down in the first person would be fun for like the running game, probably. You know. But I like the exploration game. I want like a creepy mansion. You know that I have to explore. Mm -hmm. Even a game like there's a game that came out called Dear Esther, which is really like this artsy kind of like exploration game, you know. Uh huh. And people are like, "That's oh, not really a game," but I'm like, well, "Oculus Rift would be perfect because you have this thing that's sort of like it's interactive art, but I'm also like there, you know, in right. this cave exploring it." To me, that changes the context. Like this game, The Witness, coming out, where it's like a puzzle version of The Mist. It's like, well, The Mist was a puzzle, but Mist, it's like it's like a 3D version of Mist by Jonathan Blow, the guy who did Braid. Uh -huh. I mean, that would be great for Oculus Rift. I even think he said it's going to have Oculus Rift support. I know it's going to have 3D TV support. So he said Oculus Rift support wouldn't be too far behind. And so that's how I want to play The Witness with Oculus Rift. Even a game like Jaws would be dope, where you're on a boat and a fucking giant killer shark's coming after you. Right. You know, like, just mini-games, you know what I mean? Doesn't have to be fucking crazy, like, like a Freddy game would be sick. Or Jason, just with guys stalking me in the woods and shit. Right, and you're just running through there all frantic. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's going to make people sweat and cry and throw up. Yeah. But um, then, you know, there's the space game where you actually look around and you're in your cockpit. Like, to me, dude, you know what would be really awesome? A Batmobile game, right? Where I just get in the Batmobile and fucking race right. through Gotham City like, and shit. <laughs> like in Batman Returns? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be neat. Um, I'm going to put my mute, uh, mic on mute real quick and uh, go talk to my wife about dinner. She just texted sure. me from the other room. Here I'm using a W7, just trying to build up the levels of darkness I want on this bowcaster. And also using the tip to create various texture. So it's hard to read here on the whatever, on the cam, but when you're up looking at it, you can see the different stroke marks and stuff. And then when I go and pop in all the little whites, you know, it kind of like blends together.
I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. I'm going to take a buttercup. It's Y21. Go over some of Chewy's hair with the yellow. Very lightly with the tip. It's kind of halo. All these little edges. Make them a little bit more warm here. <sighs> um, all right, got this belt to do here, so I think I'm going to want to make the belt a little bit more reddish, then I'll we'll throw a warm gray over it to tonalize it, so it doesn't blend in with his fur too much. I am back. Yep. What color is that? Is that a brown? This is a burnt sienna. It's E09. Mm. It's a little reddish brown. When I throw the warm grays over it, it'll tonalize it a bit more. I just don't want his belt to be the same color as his fur. Right. So. Have you used that color before? Yeah. What have you used it? I haven't. I've never. It's on seen your it. phoenix. Use it on your phoenix unit. For like the. The I don't burnt. Know, I I I don't I I just use it when I pops in my head to use it. You know what I mean? I don't really. Gotcha. No rhyme or reason. Yeah, I don't have someone's pictures of Copic sitting in front. I literally with this, I just make everything up as I go along. You know, like, oh, I think this would work. That would work. What am I trying to do? Like my process on this is I just don't. If I start with the same colors I used before, I go brick beige. No 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 no. Nah, it'll look the same. You know. Uh -huh. and I don't want it to look the same. I want it to be brown, but not the same kind of brown. So, I can always make it go darker. That That's not a problem. I forgot to color some of that in. So, I thought I would try to go a little more reddish brown with this. Gotcha. Yeah. Gives it that leather look, too. I suppose. That's more coincidental, I think. No, not you suppose. I'm telling you. That's leather looking right there. Good for me. Good for everyone who buys it. Yay. I'm thinking oh. ahead. Thinking of the consumer. <laughs> I'm also thinking about me because I'm probably going to buy it. If you told me you're never going to buy anything ever again. <laughs> right, but with my... Not, not but 40 minutes ago. When my, when my <laughs> wife's such a diehard Star Wars fan. It's your wife's fault. <laughs> It is. I, mean, I like how you're like, hey, I want you to put a piece of art together for her birthday. I put this whole piece of art together, ship it to you. Oh, I want that art too for her birthday. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't keep making you art. For your Dude, I, I, spoil, <laughs> I spoil her to death. I, mean, I really appreciate it, but I have other customers this stuff is for, you know? 
you know, it's it's fucked up too because it was like, you know, I just quit my job for my my spinal surgery, and it's like I got I got two hundred bucks in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent yeah, it I'm like, on I don't know. Keep your two hundred bucks, you know. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like I spent it though on the Phoenix. That was that was my last, my last bit of money went to you, just so you know. No groceries. Uh, did I not feed you when you came over? You did. Was it not good spaghetti? It was delicious. And wait till I give you the fresh, fresh pasta. Right. You're gonna fucking blow your mind. I would expect nothing less from my surrogate wife. <laughs> Yeah, that's, you gotta give someone. You gotta give someone something. <laughs> what you have that? <laughs> yeah, that was funny though when you said that. I, it, it made me. It took me back. I wasn't expecting a joke like that. Uh, we're gonna have Jason's Deli for dinner. I don't know if you got. It's just a whatever de- deli shop. I don't like a lot of deli meats. They fill it with nitrates. I'd like to say this one's different. I'd like to say this one's really healthy orientated. Unless that stuff's cut, getting cut right off a fresh bird, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if the turkey's being cut from a turkey they cook themselves, then it's coming from roll and it's full of nitrates. Is that and just water and salt or something? That's just luncheon meats, man. They're usually filled with salt and water, cured salt and water, you know? Gotcha. Well, I guess it's better than getting a burger. Hard to say, man, because of the salt content. Sometimes it's about even. Mm. Well, how I'll feel afterwards, my stomach-wise, uh, it's, it's. But if you had just if you just took some some if you bought some chicken thigh bread meat from Costco, super cheap, you get huge fucking mount for like ten bucks. You know, you could have cooked it, chilled it. You know, put that shit on some fucking bread, made yourself a little fucking salad. You'd have feel just as good. Right. Cut some slice some cheese up on your own. Wow. For time purposes, she's going to Jason's Deli around the corner. I hear you. But normally, like lately, when I look at that, that belt's working out, right? Yeah, looks very leathery. Yeah. Oh, thank you. See, if you just leave all these little cracks open in the white, when you fill it with gray, it looks like it's like distressed. Nice. But it's not. I learned that doing the Boba Fett. How am I getting all these fucking scrap metal pieces in there? You know, mm-hmm. so I just kind of left it all blocky and open. And then when I put the grays over there, it looked like metal underneath. And then you had a little white highlight or darken around the edges, and right. it starts to look like it's scraped in there. So, I think so, your Boba Fett piece was probably one of your best Photoshop pieces. Well, these are all going to be like hooked up like that. You know what I mean? No, I know, but I'm saying to date, that was probably one of my favorite pieces. Out of all the stuff you're proud of, that's. Well, that was me working out the, finally saying, hey, you know, I'm going to do that lighting. I was, I, there's a, it's called churros, it's a Spanish way of painting where they do this point light, you know, uh-huh. and I've never been able to do it on covers and stuff like that because, um, you know, you got multiple characters, it's really hard to go with that kind of mood, and then even like on like Tom's covers and stuff, like, for some reason, I just, every time I get around to doing it, I wouldn't do it, so on that one, I was like, well, now I can do what I've always wanted to do, right? Which is that take the character, then you have like just that simple lighting. That's what made Empire so great, right? Those characters just standing there with the right lighting. Right. Um. Right. Ivan Kirshner, the director, he did stage lighting on like plays and stuff, you know. So he was really big on lighting. That's why Empire looks so different. It looks know? so dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of stage lighting, you know. From the hot whites, you know, to even the way they got the frost. Like when Vader comes through, like the Hoth base with just those lights, you know what I mean? The red little red lights. You don't even mm-hmm. see his face. He's like all shadow. The snow troopers and shit, and the fucking little mist is kicking up off the ground. I think me and her will watch Empire Strikes Back tonight. Addy one, Addy one's revisited should be ready this year. He's been working on that since 2007. <laughs> I've I've contributed about a thousand dollars to that fucking project. So uh, that's no joke. Back when I had money, to um, the what? Addy one. What's that? I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. He did, dude. It's called Star Wars Revisited. He basically did what Lucas and them never could do. He actually made a real special edition where everything's fixed. 
with episode four. He actually fixed shit, and it's actually really good. Like, and this is a Kickstarter? No, no, he did this on his own, man. Like, you just oh. download it, bro. And he's been working on Empire forever, like since two thousand seven. Um, if you can get Star Wars Revisited, look that one up, you know. You mm-hmm. find a torrent or something. I mean, I have it. I can always try to upload it, give you a link. Right. But he's been working on Empire since 2007. I mean, he's rebuilt the canyon walls so he can redo certain shots that were broke. He, he even got a whole new cast set because, you know, Han Solo, when he gets put in Carbonite, his shirt's different in Jedi. Mm-hmm. So he's already rebuilt that whole thing to fix the shirt thing in Jedi. All the clouds on Cloud City are with HD clouds, you know, stock footage. So it's mm-hmm. all super fucking badass. Yeah, you type in... It's really good, man. It made me excited about Star Wars again. Addy one, huh? Yeah, Star Wars Revisited. And who's who's this guy? He's a 50-year-old dude out of fucking England, you know? He's a cool guy, man. He just wanted to basically fix this, you know, do all the little actual technical fixes. Like, they're so minute. Like, you, like R2's light doesn't blink in the first movie the way it does in the rest of the films, from blue to red to whatever. So he actually went through a rotoscope, so it actually does that subtle blinking the way it shifts in all the movies. Same with Vader's um, plate, his chest plate, lights up in Empire and in Jedi. It has these little it switches between white and green and red dot lights, but it doesn't do it on on Star Wars because shit broke half the fucking time. So he went and rotoscoped all that shit in. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Those canyon walls are awesome. Yeah, he built that too. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm looking at all the. I guess the blocks he bought for it. The... Yeah, I, I bought him like two fucking million Falcon supermodels, dude. Because the first one got stolen or lost in the mail and shit, and he was freaking out, and I got him the other stuff. So, I I I I I basically told my girl the time I said that. Look, I'm never spending money on Star Wars. You know what I mean? I refuse to spend money on Star. This is all the Star Wars money that I would have spent. I'm giving it to him. <laughs> you know? She's like, whatever. It's your fucking money. You know. Back in 2007, she was like, yeah, 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 whatever. Man, yeah, I hate when you, see, that's a problem, too, when I watch a movie and I notice all this stuff like that where it's, you know, Han, like Han Solo's shirt being different or, you know, and you watch stuff and they point it out. It's like, how, how, there's people that get paid so much money. How do you miss dude, a simple Part of this shit happens, dude, you know what I mean? Like, it's impossible to keep everything perfect, you know? Like, that's just a, the pains of the, of the of making a movie, man. But what kills me... Is, is let's say your best take and there's something fucked up. Do you do you, do you do you pick the performance or the continuity shit? You pick the performance. You know what I mean? So you deal with the continuity issue. Um, but the special editions, that's what they were supposed to fix. Not add giant fucking you know rock right. sequences and shit. You know what I mean? Like no one asked for a rock and, sequence. And dancing, the fucking, dancing yeah. slug things that no pop out. On the no screen. one asked for that. You know, like we just want. So yeah. He went a little far in the first one. He had like the battle for the heroes music to the Obi Wan Vader fight, but then he also did a version that took that out. So I don't mind it, you know. Uh-huh. But um, but he's since rescinded that sort of thing. Like he's being really purist. He's like the prequels. He's got he's got a prequel edit in him, you know. Mm-hmm. He's gonna work on it. Um, he's gonna work on all those simultaneously. But this is the year he's supposed to fin- actually finish. And is this just for fun, or does he actually make any kind of money? No, no, no. It's just because he cares. He takes no money. Yeah, He accepts donations in terms of, like, equipment, you know, things that he needs to get the job done, but no, he doesn't sell it. Addy won. Diego Ba. Yeah, dude, the way he, like, he, he took Greedo... And just in After Effects, push and pull the face. So he makes expressions when he's talking to to Han Solo, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, that's all he needed to do on the prequels. You could have had a maquette and just After Effects the fucking expressions. And it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Throw a little putty into this middle... Yeah, watching his Star Wars edit made me excited for Star Wars again. I actually started caring. I was like, whoa, look at this, I care. <laughs> I mean, there was this shit that always bothered me. Like, even on the special editions, the fucking snow speeders are transparent. You know? 
Like, it's always been that way. If you watch the Snowspeeder battle, you can see through because of the way they did the matting. You can see through them. And they never fixed it. You know, they claimed to fix it on the special day, on the on the when they went to DVD. Like, yeah, we fixed this, and they show you the side by side footage, and it's still transparent. They didn't fix it. What they did is they threw a giant blue filter over the entire film. You know, mm-hmm. so they just darkened it as much as they could to make you think. But you could you could still see it in the footage. We're like, yeah, we fixed it. You're like, no, you could still see it right there. You know. Right. And manually track it. It's taken years. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, Rob, why do you care? Well, throw a little bit of his putty in his teeth. You never knew about that? Mm-hmm. It is awesome. I was working at Play when that came out at the time. I, I I almost had them doing a whole interview with him for Geek Monthly, and then we went under. And I was just working that out. I'm going to get him a whole cover <laughs> to a national magazine. You know? I'm watching a. I got a side link here. Said what the fuck happened to uh, movie posters? And oh just... yeah, yeah, the video. Yeah. But you know that's 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 nothing that. Part of that I agree with. Part of it's just ridiculous because when they get into compositions, I'm like, look, that there's nothing new about that. Right. Um, but uh, if you really want to know what happened to movie posters, I told you Drew Struzan in that book that he did. That he it's all in his words. Right. And he literally explains what happened to movie posters and marketing departments. All the way to the very last poster he did for um, Pan's Labyrinth, you know. Yeah, which they never, they never got to use. Yeah. Well, he they talk they talk a lot about that in the in the documentary, which I think you should watch. It's pretty good. I'm gonna watch it. It's just you know, like I said, I get time for it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but I but, know all the stuff. But nothing is gonna be in there that I don't already know. You know, it'll just be fun to watch again. Yeah, everything you're telling me. Yeah. Is well, because it's come from his words and his, and I've, you know what I mean. I've read everything he's written on the subject. Mm-hmm. I, I own all the books, you know. But you were saying? Yeah, I'm just saying everything you're saying <laughs> is from, you know, it's on there to what you're saying. Even the last thing was the last kind of straw was the Pan's Labyrinth where Del Toro uh, wanted him. You know, he did the Hellboy posters and they never got used and then he knew they wouldn't use the Pan's Labyrinth but he wanted it so badly he just paid out of his Yeah, so he's got, he's got to get this guy to, you know and it's just ridiculous, like the Indiana Jones you know, when he first did his Raiders poster, the international Raiders poster, you know, all he needed was one or two comms, you know, and they just let him make it, and there you go and then with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull it took 500, he said 500 he's in that fucking room for a month or three months, just like drawing endless compositions for someone to go into Photoshop and color. He just did them in black and white on paper. You know, like on small 8.5 by 11 comps. And then they had to go and they got a Photoshop guy going there and color it all up. Because it's endless fucking tweaks. And, oh, you try it this way, try it this way, try it this way, try it this way. Me as a fan, I, it didn't really catch my attention for the longest time. I just figured, you know, they just weren't doing drawn posters because they were stupid. But I knew something was wrong when the episode three poster came out. Oh. 
different. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, wow, they're fucking with him at at the one place, you know, where I never would have thought I'd see that. Like he did those posters really at Lucas, you know, request, you know. Like why would these? But then Lucas, he didn't run those departments. It was ran by fucking Lucasfilm, you know, marketing. Right. And they literally took his comps and they made another one and photoshopped that shit in, you know. And so in the book, you at least have the original version, you know. You can see what it looked like. Don't forget to take a picture of Chewie when you're all done. I'm at the two hour mark, so I'm going to do an update pick. When she gets back, I'll probably eat, and then I'll hop back on, and you'll still be working on it. So. Yeah, I'm going to stop around 8, if I'm not, yeah, uh, about 8 so I can eat, and then I have a podcast to record from 9 to 10, and I'll be back on at 10 if you want to do it then, too. Okay, so. I've been working till 8, Which and then is I'll be off from time. 8 till 10. Yeah, so it's about 90 more minutes. Okay, so 11 o'clock my time is when you'd be back on. Yeah, what time is it now? 7.40 where you're at? Yeah. Yeah, so 11 o'clock your time. Okay, yeah, just uh, shoot me a text, too, when I, when it comes... I mean, I'm staying on now for another 10 we'll minutes. Do, we'll, so. do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. Did you already uh, color the satchel on the side there, Done. No, it's not done. Oh, okay. I'll probably give it the red, because it, it, it is attached to that. I'm just going to finish these hands and that's actual then I'll take a fucking photograph. Yeah, but their whole like reason why they're like, "Oh, we don't want the drawing because it looks like art." That's their complaint. It looks like a drawing. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, cuz it's a fucking drawing." Like, that's why it's better than a photo. Like, right. "Oh, holy crap, you know?" And, and it's not because people are tired of looking at it. It's that they're the the these things are ran by morons, is what it comes down to. What's sad is that you know they've gone away from it, and by the time it comes back around, like everything else does, you know he won't be around. You know. Well, there's there's fans out there, you know, and and it's for the next generation, like in in not maybe not for Hollywood, but for independent cinema, Kickstarter made films, whatever, you know. Yeah. That's where it's gonna have to be for, and and um. Look, I experienced this in t-shirts. You know, when I first started, you could just draw elements and do cool shit on shirts. And now it's literally the salespeople all fucking market. And within 10 years, I watched this change the whole industry. Well, that's why t-shirts suck. You go to Target, oh, look, it's a logo, you know? Because they don't even want to take any risks. They're like, logos will always sell. You know, a drawing, maybe we move it three months. We'll just put the logo, that's it. You know? And so... Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, we went to Target the other day, and, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I should pick up just, a, I don't know, like a comic book shirt to wear to the con, because I don't have a lot of them, because I don't wear a lot of comic book shirts, but I was like, yeah, maybe I'll grab one, and literally, it was either Captain America shield, yeah. the Avengers logo, the Green Lantern logo, the yeah. Batman logo, that was it. Well, they don't want actors' likenesses, because then they'll have to pay those guys something. They don't want the character art on there, because... That will that will you know, the pose gets old, so we'll just just icons. Yeah, so Watch it dilute and dilute and dilute, and then they go, well, the sales aren't there. Now we're gonna have no shirts. Like, yeah, that's it. It's because fucking people don't want t-shirts, morons. It was the logos but with these, that. It comes from marketing people, and these these sales folks they get in they get in charge. You know, they 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 we don't you know we weren't getting into like art direct our packages. We would put together a bunch of graphics, and then the salespeople would throw them all away or ignore them and put in their own stuff, and you know, yeah. and it would always be what someone else did. This company has this, so now I have this. You know, this is working at Nordstrom, so it's going to work at Target. Like, what what makes you think the person at Target wants what the fucking Nordstrom person wants? Right. They all have that uh, like washed a hundred times look where it's already like partial. Stress, the yeah, yeah, yeah. stress out. everything. Yeah, that, that's that's Target. We're all gonna. And then then everything starts looking the same. And then Target goes, well, you only have the same shit. We don't. Want... Yeah. 
at a con once. And he said, dude, basically, it's artist's jobs, it's artists' job, it's an artist's job to look forward, to anticipate trends. And salespeople are always looking at a sales sheet to see what, what already happened. You know, so they're looking backwards and you're looking forwards. Who said that? The, the guy who created Ren Stippy, created John Chris Lucy. Oh, okay. You, you cut out when you said that, so I didn't yeah. hear. Yeah. He said this quote on his website I, I used to end cap all my fucking message board posts with, and it was like, he's like, I make music and, and art. He's like, I make... He's like, I make art, you know, who is it? He's like, I enjoy making music because um, no one tells me to do it poorly or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the best at quoting people, but it was hilarious. It's basically like, I do, I do make the art because you know I love being an editor, but I make music because I can do it well. And no one tells me to do it poorly. And you don't understand how true that is until you have an art job, and you're constantly being told to compromise because this person has an opinion. And well, artists, and then they're thinking artists always think they're right. I'm like, well, it's not that I think I'm fucking right. It's that I at least have a reason to why I'm doing something. You're just doing it something because it's on a whim. And unless you're some genius fucking producer, you know, that can prove that you you're right. Chances are, you what you're really doing is you're looking at something that you've already seen that made money, and you're trying to get me to make that be right. that. They've seen they've seen it succeed somewhere else, maybe while they're walking. And you go, whoa, I'm trying to hedge a bet, and it's like, well, there's a big difference between doing something like something and doing and just knocking it off, and it always turns into knocking it off every time. Then, then, then you're like, well, we're not just going to put one or two graphics in there like that. Guess what? All 150 fucking graphics are like that. And it's just madness. And you're like, you, you try. I've tried to plead with you, and I try. I'll argue with him, and it's like Rob's combative. I'm like, well, it's my fucking <laughs> job. Like, I, I'm the one. If this place folds tomorrow, I come to work. I have no job. I don't have. I, I didn't get a hundred thousand dollar commission this year, like you, asshole. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fucked. I'm not. It's part of me if I don't trust you with my livelihood. Right. You know. I literally had this cat trying to tell me what a comic books thing was, right before I left. You know, the sales chick. She's trying to tell me about comic books, and I'm like, "Excuse me, right? <laughs> this is where." And my art director just like, "Oh, they like it, right?" That Rob stir up shit. I'm like, "Excuse me, when was the last time you went to a store or a convention to specifically buy a piece of art or something that was drawn by somebody? Name me the artist in the book and or a piece of print or whatever you bought. Name me the last time you collected art." She's like, well, I said, don't fucking tell me what movie you saw. Tell me what piece of art you collected. You know, right. because I'll be goddamned if you're going to fucking tell me what is and isn't art. You know, this is all I do. This is all I ever do. I do it. You know, you're going to fucking dictate to me what an artist is or what a comic book is. I'm like, and she was like my age. When I knew in high school, you were the fucking, you were one of those chicks who would clown cats like me because I was watching comic book movies or going to The Crow or or going to Comic Con, you know? Right. Like, I don't tell me you were going to Comic Con dressing up in cosplay and shit. I mean that that shit might play fifteen, twenty years from now, you know? When those girls grow up and maybe they get into positions, but these marketing folks, these dudes and these chicks that didn't like shit. You know, when I was in high school. Right. Or they would if it was just you and them. You ever have that? Yeah. Like you might be in PE, and if it's just you and this other person that got teamed up, you could talk about comics with them. Oh, actually, I like that stuff. But then if you try to talk to them around the friends about it, you're like the loser. Right. You know? Don't think I, I don't remember you people. I never forget. <laughs> Rob never forgets. It's like, I can't knows, stand it. He knows when you've been good and bad. He... I lose. I, that's when I lose it, you know. When someone's gonna tell me I don't know how to deal with art, I'm like you, you, you just you done fucking crossed a line. <laughs> okay, I, I pop. I have stands. All I can stands, and I can't stands no more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this this one salesperson wanted to put Avengers in everything, and I was like, look, it's not a good idea to do that. And she's like, well. Uh, it's the number one selling movie of all time. I said, first off, it's not. 
Avatar is. It's not even number two. That's Titanic. I'm like, second of all, as big as Avatar was, those t-shirts did nothing. So don't fucking tell me that the highest grossing movie equals the most selling shirts. That's got nothing to do with one another. Right. You know? They don't like it when you know the sales shit. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> That's why they would never tell artists, you know, what what you sold. Oh, your design did this much because we don't get commissions, you know. And if you knew you were generating the company twenty million dollars, you know what I mean? You'd be like, hey, I'm making twenty bucks an hour here, you know. Right. They don't want that. The the salesperson, that person that walked in there, took all your art, put it in front of someone. That person got the money. That person's vacationing in Cancun while you don't even get a vacation. And I'm being told, oh, you know, Rob, you shouldn't be doing this because you love it. I should, you, you, I want to reach right across the desk and strangle those people, you know? for a photograph. I had a buddy of mine the other night. He's like, oh man, your art's looking a lot better lately. He's like, you know, how do you, are you putting your stuff out there? Or you, have you tried deviant art? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't, I just said, yeah. Uh, well, first I, first I came back with a real smart answer. I'm like, I'm like, wait, wait, I should try selling my art online? Because that's what he says. Just sell it online. And I hate to put him on blast because I love the guy, but He's like, you should try selling it online more at different places. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I should try to sell my art? You can do that? <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, why didn't you tell me a long time ago? I was like, what? what is it? Deviant art? What is that? I'm like, dude, I'm on everything. Twitter, Tumblr. Uh, I'm on YouTube with Rob. I'm <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm like, you know, I didn't want to get into the whole, you know, art conversation where the likes don't equal money. But I was just like, first I hit him with that smart ass shit of, wait, what? I should try selling my art? Oh, shit. You bastard for not telling me sooner. Well, that's why I don't like talking about art or art jobs with people when I go out, you know? Hey, what do you do? Nothing. You know? Like, what are you up to, you know? <laughs> Nothing. I do art. What kind of art? Nothing. Hey, what are you up to? What's your job? Like, I like to interview people, you know? Like, I don't really want to talk about myself. I know what I'm up to. Yeah. I talk about it enough. <laughs> I'm here all every fucking day on YouTube for three hours, six hours at a time talking about it. Alright. I don't I don't want to talk about it with you folk. Let's talk about a movie. Let's talk about TV, you know? Which now anyone anyone wants to talk about is football. And I'm like, well, I got nothing to say. Yeah. Love the guy. Casey's listening. Love ya. But Yeah, but just type my name into fucking the internet and you know. Yeah. But they, they mean well. It's when it comes from another artist that you're like... <laughs> What's funny is he's also a friend who... I've called him on it because it bugs me, but he's, you know, he's, he's like, hey, if, you know, if you're bored, you should draw me uh, you should draw me this. Like, oh, all right, let me, just, let me just crack it open and give you some free art here and let me spend my time. My favorite is when people give me con advice. Like, you know, Rob... You should get on some panels. I'm like, first off, I don't know where the fucking Rob getting on panel submission box is. Second of all, you know what I mean? Like, even if I did, you're telling me I should take two to three, like, what, an hour or two out of my time from my table, you know, that I paid for. Because if the table was comped, I might be like, well, that might be something I pursue. But I paid how much for this spot? 600 bucks? I'm going to get up and go into a room to do what? To feel important? I mean... The best right. panels I ever went to was like one artist talking to you. So if it was just going to be me sitting, in, that was um, was a, it was uh, Sam Keith, who was like 40 minutes late. We all waited for him. It's hilarious. And uh, just in a small room with us talking, you know, that would be interesting. You people. I got you know, asked. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, I got asked by Jimmy J to 
if I could come to his booth for an hour because he's having different artists come and sketch. And I'm like, well, you know, and I was like, that's an hour away from my table that I had to pay for. Yeah, you paid for that table. What are you yeah. to earn? What him money? Right. And he's like, well, you know, maybe for a future con, I can comp you, comp you some, you know, money off. Maybe. I'm like, and I'm like, uh, that's, that's if he remembers. And I mean, he's he's a great guy and all, but he's don't even give him explanations. Just say you can't. Just decline. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I just stopped explaining myself. Nah, it's all right. Yeah. Right. Great guy, but I mean, he's running a con. He's not going to remember everything. He's not going to be like, you know, five months from now, oh, yeah, I owe Brandon, you know, money off on this table. No. Yeah, but they're not going to, too. Like, right. That's the thing. So. All right. I am going to hop off where you take a picture and stuff and uh, just message me later when yeah, I you will. want me back we'll on. Be. Okay. Thanks for having Led me. Ledheavy.com, ledheavy.com, right? Ledheavy on Instagram, ledheavy on Twitter, ledheavy on everything. Yay. Ledheavy.com. Brandon James, I'm out. Rick and Morty forever and ever and ever. Brandon J. <laughs> Brandon J. I'll be. BJ Potato. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mega Potato is out. Peace. Peace. Now I'm going to try some of this lilac on like the brown parts a little bit. See how I like it? Yeah. This is a VO4. I can throw a little bit of more brown in there just to kind of keep it from being too red. But just around like the little tips. And in some of these little streaks. Just to add a little bit of color fluctuation right there. Yeah, I'll throw a little bit of brown over that just so it's not a bunch red. I like the fluctuation too. You just want to be very light with this. Don't overdo it. Come back over with this very light brick beige. It's a little yellow right there. And use this more of a, in a way, as a blender. But I say I'm blending with color. That's why I don't like those blender brushes because they just they like add nothing. I'd rather blend with a little bit of a color than just drop clear liquid on top of my my art.
One hour. One hour. Anything else? Uh, his legs need a little, little work here. I'm gonna try this dark brown. This is uh, E25. And I want to go back over with some, some of the warm grays like the E, the W7, W5. It's Make it a little darker on the bottom, just give it a little bit more weight as well. See how that's working. I want to go with. Yeah, it's good. Right here. Yeah, there's one more contrast in the legs here. A little dirtier. Oh, that needs. Let's all add a little bit of those white highlights along the edge right there, so when I get there. And this needs a little bit more contrast. Ah, the W5 is dying. I think I'm going to take that brick red here. Burnt sienna, sorry. And tint this a little bit.
Yeah, his lips need to be just a smidge darker. Use the uh, W7. I'll just Make it a little darker towards the back here because I'll add the little white highlighter on the edge to pop out that stuff. So. This uh, hot ping is R43. Just try to halo some of this. There. And then I can take a Y zero zero, it's a really light yellow. Oh, is that dead? Do I have two of them? Yeah, I have two of them. That's trash. Alright. I can just off so that's not white. Alright, I think he's pretty much good to go. I could start on there. Let me, let me let this sit for a second. Think about it. Oh. I'm not tired. I have plenty of sleep.
do 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 All right. He's going to need a little bit of shadowing when I get there. But in the meantime, I'm going to work on Han here. Alright, uh, I'll start with his skin tones. I'm going to start with a brick beige. Wait, no, I'll start with barley beige. E11. E11. I'll start with. And I have silk. Y R zero zero zero. Let me see if that might be a little too faint. No, Y R zero zero is perfect. You can kind of push in and out. You can use the side of the thing to kind of come in there and jet little extra facial structures with the color. So let me go over here and get do do do. And then let me try some of this light brown E31, which is brick bit.
And then let me try this purple. This BV00. And then we grab that burly beige again. His fingers aren't really. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to take fruit pink, it's like a really fleshy, poppy color here. Try halo some of this, so add a little color into his face, but not a ton. It's just that spot between the dark and the midtone. I call it haloing, like it, it adds that nice little warm spot. There you go. All right. Put these two back here, and then I'm gonna start his T-shirt. It's like this cream, so we use a buttercup, which is Y21, as the base for his. Well, that dries. So I'll start with Brig Beige again, and then I'll move into that Sham. And then Sham was E35. And this marker needs refills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one.
All right. There we go. And I'll take the chamois. E35. Yay. And then come over here and mix it up a little bit. Near, 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 near. Let's see. 